Acts chapter 2, please. Your old men shall dream dreams. Pay close attention, leaders. The only one who doesn't qualify is Pastor David. He doesn't. Pastor Patrick's on the edge. <laughs> Your old men shall dream dreams. <laughs> Father, I thank you with all my heart. Oh, God. My heart is overflowing today. Lord, I stand in your presence. What can I say, Lord? But you have been so faithful. Faithful is who you are. Faithful is what you are. Faithfulness is what you do. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, that even at this stage of my life, you're opening a brand new door, taking me to another place, something deeper than I've ever known before, showing me something about your heart that I hadn't seen in my youth. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, for all of us that are gathered here today, Lord, that you would unlock this mystery and show us why this is a blessing of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for it with all my heart. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit, the strength, God, to honor you all the days of my life. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I have lived a very rich and a very varied life. Sometimes it seems like a dream. I feel like the Psalm that there was once written and said, when the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like those that dream. Then was our tongue filled with singing, our mouth, mouths with laughter. Oh God, they said, turn us again, O Lord. In other words, give us, give us another victory. Take us to another place. It has been an incredible journey from the days of pulling over my car in 1978 and praying a simple prayer. Lord, if it's true what I heard, if it's true that I can be forgiven, if it's true that you promise that whoever comes to you becomes a new person, a new creation, and the old things pass away and all things become new. God, if that's true, I open my heart to you. I invite you in to be my Lord and Savior. And what a journey it's been from that day. Set free from nine years of fear, panic attacks in a moment of time, reading the word of God, believing a half of a promise. I didn't even have the whole promise. I just remembered half the verse of God before us, who can be against us? And on the strength of that half of a promise set free from nine years of living hell on the earth, suffering panic attacks. And quite often when you least expected it, it would come upon your life. Being given the grace to speak and knowing the anointing of the Holy Spirit, this strange new experience that when you'd stand up to speak in the Lord's name, it's like you would be overshadowed by something greater than yourself. Of course you are, it's by God's Holy Spirit, but when you're young, you don't fully understand it. Then suddenly out of your mouth starts flowing a river of living water. And you, it, it, has, it has been miraculous, traveled a good part of this world, preached in places I never thought I could. I've seen God stop civil war. I've watched him break a cycle of violence and poverty that had gone on for years and bring in salvation and prosperity. It's been an incredible life, just an absolutely marvelous life. Now, the prophet Joel spoke and was confirmed by the apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost. The time had come when God would interact through all who turned to him in a supernatural way. You know, it's true that the last days actually began on the day of Pentecost. We talk about the last days, but we've been in the last days since the day of Pentecost, since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Almost 2,000 years ago, we've been in the last days. And remember, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. 
It's not going to be long. He's coming for us. We know the season that we're in now. And it will culminate with the cosmic signs that I read about. The sun turning into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. It will culminate on a great calling out to God among many. And whoever does call out to him, the scripture says, will be saved. And ultimately, the Lord Jesus Christ will return for us as his people. What a day that is going to be. Oh, thank God. I look forward to that with all of my heart. I've known much of this verse, this first verse in verse 17. It'll come to pass in the last days. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Now the word prophesy in the original text means to declare truth through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I've known what that's like. From the earliest days of my life, I remember being sent to police college at a certain point as God was leading my life and training me to be taught and trained how to speak. I didn't know how to speak anything but Bible topics. And I, I remember I would get up and I, 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 I had no experience in this whatsoever. And I was in a classroom full of seasoned public speakers. I was the only novice there who'd never really spoken anywhere. But I would pray. I remember the carpet on the floor in my room very, very well for my face was about an inch from it most of the evening, every night. But I would pray. And God's Holy Spirit would come on me. When I began to speak, God would begin to speak through me. And it was amazing. Yeah, I, was, I was dumbfounded. I had to do a, five, a three minute, a five minute, a 10, a 15, and ultimately a 20 or 30 minute presentation at the end. And I, I remember the wisdom that God gives. They called me in right near the last presentation. I had to do a 30 minute and you passed or failed the course based on this presentation. And I'm supposed to be representing the whole department now when I got back to my own home department. They called me in and they said, Carty, you're a nice guy. We really like you and everything. But this is not an evangelistic association. This is a police college and you, you cannot pass. You cannot pass your final exam unless you speak on a police topic. I was horrified. I mean, I went back and thought it's only the anointing of God's spirit that has enabled me to do this. I mean, when I start speaking about a Bible topic, this, this presence of God would come on me. And I, I knew, I mean, God, are you going to anoint me to talk about the preservation of a crime scene? Are you, I don't think you're going to do that. And so I was in a quandary. I said, oh God, what am I going to do? I, I can't do this if I'm not speaking about you. So the next day I got up and I, we op opened the class and it was my turn to speak. And I said, all right, today I'm going to speak to you about a police topic, the Bible. I said, because when we get up into a court of law, we're asked to put our hand on a book and we say, I swear based on what's in this book that the, what I'm about to say is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And so when I put my head, when I opened it up, I started and I said, don't you think guys and girls that it's important to know what we're swearing to and what's in this book and what we're saying that we believe? And everybody went, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And so I started at Genesis and I went right through to Revelation. 30 minutes on the dot, I finished with these coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. At the end of the meeting, they were supposed to uh, evaluate me based on eye contact, voice intonations, hand gestures. Nobody did any of that. Everybody looked at me and, and I remember that everybody in the room, one after another, they're supposed to evaluate me. And they said, man, I never heard anything like that in my whole life. I mean, one guy said, boy, have you ever given me something to, to think about? Another guy just went, wow, <laughs> like this is what I'm swearing to. And I put my hand on, on the Bible. I went in there filled with fear. I went in there never having spoken anywhere in my whole life. And at the end of the course, the instructors came to me and said, every once in a while, we identify somebody that has the capability to actually teach this course. Would you be interested if we can get a release from your department of coming back as an instructor in this course? That's what God can do, folks. That's what God can do. That's, that's speaking the truth of God in a divine way. That's what God does. That's what God did in my life. He, took me out of a place of fear and inadequacy and his Holy Spirit came upon me and he gave me the strength and it goes on says your your young men 
It says, your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions. Now the word visions means inspired appearances. Now I've seen visions, pictures. God, God speaks to me in pictures once in a while when I least expect it. It's like a camera flash. I can't explain it to you any other way. One time I was on the platform here worshiping. Pastor David was beside me and suddenly he gave me one of those pictures that he does. And I saw Pastor David standing going all over the world and standing before pastors who had fallen onto the ground in despair. And as he was standing there and he had a censer, which indicates worship and prayer. And as he was standing before them, they were starting to rise up all over the place and they're starting to give God glory again. And they, hope and courage was coming into their hearts. I leaned over to pastor David and I said, pastor David, the Lord's just shown me he's going to send you all over the world speaking to pastors. Pastor David leaned back to me and said, well, he hasn't spoken that to me yet. And I said, well, I can only tell you what he's shown me. And a year later, Pastor David launched out on what became a 56, I believe, nation tour, speaking to tens and tens and tens of thousands of pastors. And the presence of God would come so powerfully in those meetings. I remember in one particular meeting, they say there was anywhere from eight to 10,000 people in the stadium. And the whole stadium went to their faces. Even the maintenance people in the back, the presence of God came so powerfully. And when they rose to their feet, they were encouraged. They were worshiping again, exactly as God had shown me. I remember standing on a platform in Jamaica on a killing field where there had been 800 murders in 30 years, six communities, hundred percent of drug, all drug selling, total violence, hundred percent unemployment, a hundred thousand people. And standing on that platform, I saw suddenly condominiums, new ones, beautiful ones built on the right side of that field. And I saw children playing soccer. I believe it was in the middle of the field. And if you were to go there today, they're calling it the trench town miracle. You'll see beautiful condominiums on the right side of the field. And there's a children's playground in the middle of what used to be a killing field. I have seen it says your, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And now the Lord has reserved the best for the last. It's in the Bible, folks. The best wine is at the end of the banquet. The glory of the latter house is greater than the former. I have had in life more than my heart could wish for. I have the loveliest wife a man could ever hope for. God has blessed me beyond measure. I have two fine, decent, and honest sons, both of whom I'm exceedingly proud of. And I thank God for that. I have a lovely and a caring daughter and she's going to sing again pretty soon. And I'm very, very thankful for that. I have two wonderful daughters-in-law and a terrific son-in-law. God has blessed me folks. God has blessed my home, blessed my family. But now this old man is beginning to dream dreams. That's the third promise to me. Your old men shall dream dreams. I am a papa to eight wonderful grandchildren. And I get to experience this, another side of God that I had never known before. There's a side of God in Genesis chapter two. Let me read it to you. It says, out of the ground, verse 19, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. That's the grandfather's side of God. God created this man out of the dust. He created the birds. He created the animals. He couldn't know what they were called. He's God. But he brings them to Adam. And Adam. Now a father would say, Adam, this is a giraffe. Now remember that. A grandfather would say, Adam, what do you think we should call this? And the scripture says, whatever Adam called every living creature, that's what they are called today. I get to experience this wonderful side of God. You see, mom and dad represent the law. They do. That's what moms and dads are. They're the law. Get up in the morning, brush your teeth. Where are your books? Put on your good shoes. Take off your good shoes. Put on your old shoes. Change your pants. What did you say? That's mom and dad. Mom and dad are the law. Eat your supper. Eat your Brussels sprouts. They're good for you. Otherwise, you're going to you know, you're going to suffer for it. You're not going to grow and all that stuff. That's not really completely true, but that's what mom and dad, 
Moms and dads represent the law. I've been there. I understand that. It's the, the, the legal side of God that says, taste not, touch not, handle not. Be careful crossing the road. Don't do this. Say that. You know, that's the legal side. And moms and dads have to go through that. But Papa and Grammy get to represent grace. <laughs> it's the other side of God. I have a room in a place where we go in the summertime for holidays with fish that hang from the ceiling. A closet I turned into a store and it's filled with candy from top to bottom. I tried, I was encouraged by my daughter's in law and I tried a healthy line last year, it didn't go well. But it's, it's filled with O'Henry bars, it's filled with gummy worms, it's filled with jujubes, it's filled with Swedish fish, it's, it's got all this stuff from top to bottom. And it's called Papa's Store. And at the end of every day, if everybody behaves, they get to go to Papa's Store and they get to get a handful of whatever they want. They don't, they don't always behave. Sometimes the door to that room is closed and there's a lot of whispers going on in there. Now, I know what's going on, but I don't say anything to anybody. Papa and Grammy, it's like ice cream. You want ice cream? How much do you want? You want a big one? You want a supersized ice cream? You want the three-foot chocolate rabbit for Easter? No problem. You have to hide it under the bed, of course. You, know, you and I are the only ones who go, no, it's there. You want to stay up late? Hey, let's stay up late. This is awesome. We don't get to do that all the time. You want to find Grammy? Even yesterday, Grammy was underneath the uh, dining room table with one of the grandchildren playing. She's, she, she carries walkie-talkies. They pretend that they're agents. They're tracking us through the house. And, Jumping on the sofa, jumping on the bed. We wouldn't let our kids do that. Don't do that. You're going to wreck the mattress. You know, don't do that. You're going to fall and get hurt. Last night they were jumping. See if you can go higher. See if you can go higher. Higher. <laughs> and if something breaks, ah, it's no big deal. We've had that vase in the family for a hundred years. What? <laughs> don't really need it any longer anyway. You see, I believe that's the way God intended to reveal his character through the family. It's amazing. You, that's why family is under such attack. Do you understand that? Because God made it that way so that his character would be known through mom and dad, through grandma and grandpa. And so the devil, knowing that, went after family and has gone after family. Now, thank God. I know there's heartache. I know there's a lot of heartache here today. But we are, we are in another family now, in the body of Christ. Thank God. You can get to be grandma and grandpa here in the body of Christ and mom and dad as well. So what are these dreams that old men dream? Why is it divine? Why is it considered a supernatural thing? Matthew Henry, the commentator, says these dreams are divine revelations. In other words, remember Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit will, is come, he will take what is mine and show it to you, and he will show you things to come. Divine revelations. You begin to speak into your heart about the future. Not only your children, but the future of your grandchildren as well. He will tell you things that he's about to do in and through your family, and especially the little ones that he's put in your care. He, these, are, these are whispers of God. I thank God for it with all my heart. For I've had another one of these camera flashes. The Lord has promised me years ago that my family will be known long after I'm gone for missions, for just being involved in missions. I don't know in what capacity, and thank God I don't have to make it happen. This morning, the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, Carter, if you have to make it happen, it's no longer a promise. It's a promise. Your family will be known for missions. And I, I have a, another one of those camera flashes that come to me quite often. And it's never been wrong. Not one time in my life has it been wrong when God has spoken to me this way. And I hear one of my children saying, I wish dad was here to see this. That means I'm gone at that point, already in heaven, most likely. And I thank God, but he's given me a flash of it. So I'm already actually there into the future. Your old men shall be given these divine revelations, these understandings. Listen, we have more power as grandparents than you and I realize. God gives us the power to speak into the lives of our next generation. He gives us the power, the power to tell them not, not what it is now, but what it will be what God's going to do, the plans that he has, especially if we take the time to pray. Malachi chapter four and verse six, the last verse in the Old Testament 
Listen to what this prophet of God said. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which we read about in the book of Acts chapter two, that day when the sun is turned into darkness, the moon into blood, the powers of the heavens are going to be shaken. That's the day he's speaking about. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. In other words, your words, according to Malachi chapter four, verse six, have the power to break any curse of sin that this world would like to captivate your family with, and it's also for those that you love, that you have influence. Your words have power. Your words have power. I believe that's why the devil has tried to sow selfishness into the body of Jesus Christ, knowing that if our hearts turn only to ourselves, we would lose that power. We would lose the vision the Holy Spirit was willing to give us for the future. But when our hearts are turned to the children, when the hearts of those of us who have walked with God are not just seeing children in this church as something to be babysat, but this is tomorrow's church. This is the testimony of Christ in the earth. We're not just looking at children running in our hallways or sitting in our Sunday school classrooms. We are looking at the future of this nation. We are looking at pastors and evangelists. We're looking at the testimony of God. And we have the power as our hearts are turned to our children. We have the power to break the curse of sin on the earth. It's a phenomenal thought when you begin to think about it. The incredible power in your speech when you've walked with God and your heart is not all about yourself. It's not all about your retirement. It's not all about your own comfort. Your heart is now towards your children. Your heart is towards your grandchildren. Your heart is towards other children that God has put under your influence. And you're thinking about them and you're praying about them and you're living for them. Then suddenly the divine begins to flow through your life. That's the dreams the old men begin to dream. It doesn't say old women because they would have been offended. That's why I just said old men. <laughs> Nobody would admit to it. So... But those are the dreams. Those are the dreams. I, I see things. I see things in my grandchildren, good things. And God gives me and will give me the ability to speak these things into their lives. And it doesn't have to be outlandish. It's just things like you will be a very kind person. Let God do that in your life. You'll have a heart for people. Just let God do what he wants to do in your life. And we're not making it up. It's something that God begins to speak to us. As we see the character of our grandchildren unfold and we seek God on their behalf and he begins to speak and we start to dream these dreams. It's amazing. These divine revelations that can only come from God. And I'm entering that stage in my life now. I got to tell you, I have to tell you, it's the best. I mean, I've, I've preached to 500,000 people. You know that. I've been in the homes of two presidents. One who asked for advice as, a, as I was part of a larger group and another who asked for advice one-on-one. Advice -on -one. I've traveled. It's been amazing. But nothing beats this. This is the icing on the cake. This, this, this is, how do I say it? This is what makes growing old the most joyful thing. Amazing. When you begin to realize that we have the power of speech to make a difference in somebody's life and to show them a character, the character of God in a way that they may never have seen it before. The psalmist in Psalm 71 verse 18 says, now also when I'm old and gray headed, oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. He knew, this psalmist knew this. I know this now. It's the most delightful time in my entire life now. I've said that and I'll keep saying it. Growing old in the body of Christ, in the world, it's in the world. Growing old is fearful. It's all about aches and pains and your kids are just trying to decide what home maybe to put you in or how to look after you or for real. I mean, because old age is not esteemed. But in the body of Christ, 
Old age is given power. Do you understand? Given power. Way, way power, way beyond prophesying and seeing visions. Because those things are essentially about larger events, may I put it that way. But at the end of life, it's about the people that you love. It's about the ones closest to you. It's about what God has put under your care. It's about nephews and nieces. It's about grandchildren. It's about that mother and her three kids across the hall. That's what it's about. When you get old in the body of Christ, you don't have to curl up and die. You start living. And it's truly amazing. My prayer is, God, in my last days, I want to be I want to be stretched out and telling people, bang that arrow on the ground and hit it again and hit it again. Go with God. Live for God. Trust God. He's never failed me and he will never fail you. And that has to be our cry today. Oh God, turn our hearts to the children of this generation. The children that are dying, as the prophets say, for lack of spiritual understanding on every street corner. Oh God, turn our hearts to them. No matter how difficult it may seem, or how far away they might be. Show us, Lord, futures, and give us the courage to speak into their lives. A, a spoken word into somebody's life can carry them for the rest of their life. You, you, some of you know that. It took you years to get over something that was spoken to you that was evil. But when God uses his church to speak something good into your life, it can carry you for the rest of your days. I remember as a young Christian, I was just going under. I I just felt like a failure. I had so many struggles in my life. I was just dealing with so much stuff. The old things pass away, but some of it passes away like one of those old Western movies. You ever seen one of those old things? The guy gets shot in the saloon, falls over the table, gets up, falls over the chair, climbs the stairs, falls over the banister behind the bar, gets up, falls over the bar onto the floor, and you're wondering, is this guy ever going to die? When is this ever going to end? That's one of those old 19... 40 and 50 Westerns. Well, that's the way I felt. Is this guy ever going to die? I thought old things are passed away. Well, they are. They've lost their fuel source. They try to hang on for all they're worth. I remember just crying out to God and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, will you, will you help me? Will you keep me? Will you guard me? Will you guide me? Will you lead me? And God has been so faithful. It's been an amazing journey. All of his promises are true. They are Yea and amen. And I was so tempted to give up. And I was under this cloud for a couple of months and I was feeling despairing. Oh, what's the use? You're never going to change. You're always going to be the way you are. And there was an older police officer. His name was Doug Seabrook. And we were out at a crime prevention thing together one day. And he says, what's wrong with you? He was a Christian. He says, what's wrong with you? And he was about my age, all close to my age that I am now. He said, what's wrong with you? And I said, ah, I'm just so discouraged. I just feel like I'm a failure. and I, I want to be different, but I, some of the things are just so entrenched, and I, I just, I, it's hopeless. And he looked at me and said, that's just the devil. <laughs> the devil's trying to condemn you. He says, but there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. And he says, you want God? I know you want God. He says, so let's just put that thing away. And it was God. It was God. I still remember his words to this day. Spoken over my life. Wasn't profound. He didn't open the text of the Bible. So that's the devil. Praise God. And there was just an older man speaking into a younger man's life. I was only in my early 20s. And I was able to get up again. And that's the power he's given us now. Now, whether or not your children are still at home or your grandchildren are still close by, you still have that power. You, you have the power to write a card, a note. If, if your children are not speaking to you, you can write a card. You can make a call if they are, but you still have that power. Praise God for that. God, turn my heart to the children of this generation and use my voice to lead them to finding your will for their lives. That's the cry of my heart now. And it is a wonderful place to be. And I want to encourage all the older folks that are here today. I'm going to give an altar call just for you. For real. You define that yourself as to what you think older is. I'm 63 and I qualify, okay? Pastor David is 42 and he doesn't, all right? So if, if you're anywhere between there, 
I want to pray for you today that God give you the power to speak to your families, the power to see what he's doing in their lives, the power to make a difference in a generation of young people, the power to escape ourselves, our own aches and pains and desires for comfort. And as we say in our Bible school, to live for the benefit of others, beginning in our own home and to finish life that way, living for the benefit of others, starting in our own house. Now your speech may not have been good, but this can be a brand new day. It can be a brand new beginning for somebody where suddenly God's going to turn it and you're going to start speaking in your own house and to your own family in a way that's going to help them to grow in the understanding of who God is. Now, Father, I thank you with all my heart, Lord, for speaking to me in such a way this week and to speaking to us today and Lord, even orchestrating such a beautiful surprise this morning, just to put a punctuation mark, an exclamation point on this message that you had already given me. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, you are so faithful, even this morning telling me that if you had to make it happen, then it's no longer a promise. I promise you, I will care for your house if you care for mine. And so, Father, I thank you with all of my heart, in spite of our flaws, our frailties, and our failures, the things that we're happy about and the things that we're not happy about. Still, you remain faithful, and you give us the power to speak to this next generation in a way that will lift them out from under the curse of sin and bring them into the eternal and abundant life that is theirs through Jesus Christ. You've given us power in our voices. Would you give us a revelation of that today and help us to recognize it with all of our hearts? I thank you in Jesus' name. I'm going to worship just for a moment. But for all the older folks here today, this altar call is just for you. I'm going to ask you to come down and join with me, and we're going to pray together and say, God Almighty, God Almighty, we want to dream dreams the way we've heard it from your word today. Let's stand together and just come. Wherever you are, just slip out of your seat in the balcony, the annex. If you're in the annex, come on over. The balcony, come on down. And we're going to pray, and God's going to do something miraculous at this altar. I know it in my heart today. Come on down as we worship. We thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you for how good you are. We thank you, Lord, that your eye is always upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you know how to build heritage into our lives, oh God. That when we trust you, Lord Jesus... You will bless us and you will bless our seed. You will bless our spiritual seed. Thank you, oh God. We have this hope in you alone that, Lord, you are able to take us no matter where we come from, oh God. Blend us into a family. Let us call you Father. And, Lord, you bring something good. No matter what our lives have brought, you are able to make something beautiful out of our lives. So for this, oh God, we give you the praise today. For this, oh God, we give you thanks. For this, O oh God, we say there is no one like you. So we ask you, O oh God, let your favor rest upon us this day. Let your favor rest upon our families. Let your favor, O oh God, your mercy that endures forever, O oh God, your mercy that will never leave us, Lord, whether single or in families, O oh God, your mercy will never leave us. And I thank you today, O oh God, that we walk with you and you are for us. So we give you the praise today. Thank you for this service. Thank you for the blessings, Lord. Receive all the glory from our lives. In your precious name we pray. Now I'd like to pray for you. King David at one point in his life had some deep regrets in his heart. He had gotten on a pursuit that had led his family into captivity. But the scripture says he, he encouraged himself in the Lord and the knowledge of who God is, promises and how God had been faithful in years gone by. And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, God gave him a strategy to go back and get his family. And he did, by the grace of Almighty God, recovered all. And I feel in this generation, as we begin to pray, God's going to give us an understanding of, and tell us to go up and get your children. 
And remember, all children in the body of Christ belong to us, not just our own physical lineage, but all children. And there's some out in the streets that belong to God as well. They just don't know it yet. But he will give us the power to get up and go get them. And it's not in strength, but in weakness that he becomes our strength to do this. Father, thank you, Lord God, for, Lord, we have lived to see your power. We have lived to see it, Lord. And I thank you, God, with all my heart for my brothers and my sisters at this altar. Lord, in your sight, God, there's more power with age than there is with youth. And Lord, give us an understanding of that. This is a spiritual kingdom. It's not a natural kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. And Lord, you've sown a deep deposit in each of our lives. And so God, we pray now that you reach down deep and draw it out for this generation. Draw our hearts out, God, recognizing that the curse of sin can be pushed back by an army the devil never saw coming. God Almighty, we thank you for our prayers. We thank you, God, for the ability to speak a word in season to a troubled heart. We thank you, God, for the ability to display something of you, Lord, that will cause young people to say, I want to know who this God is. I want to begin to walk with God. Thank you, Lord, that heaven will be populated because of what we are choosing to do this morning at this altar. I pray for strength, God, for my brothers and my sisters. I pray, God, strength that can only come from the Holy Spirit. You told us this was a promise given to the prophet Joel. You told us, Lord, this was a mark of the supernatural, that your old men shall dream dreams. And so, God, we choose to dream these dreams to their fullest. God, we choose to walk in that revelation. We choose, Lord, to display, be a display of your power and that your power might be made known through us to this generation. God, till the day that you take us home, we will not stop praying. We will not stop speaking. Father, we thank you. God, with all of our hearts, this is a great day. This is a great day to be alive in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name.